Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio, this is the Agenda Podcast for Tuesday the 23rd of April. The Agenda, an alternative commentary collective podcast. G-Lane still down the road in Taupo. Uh, day, well I was going to say it was day two of school holiday punishment for you, but it's actually not, is it? This is probably closer to day four. I can see, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, we right. Week two. I yeah, would the say light is at the end. It's quite an interesting setup here at uh, work because there's usually nowhere to get a park around the building, but in school holidays, all of a sudden, the, the, all of the parks are free. And despite yeah. that, there's police standing outside the door of our building here. If you don't know, we share an office with uh, the Hits, ZB, the Herald, places like this. Chris Luxon's in the building doing the, the car wash at the moment, getting interviewed by Hosking and everyone else that will have him. Um, and so with the Prime Minister, as always, comes uh, police detail. They parked in a loading zone, despite the fact that there are so many parks around. And it, doesn't it just give you free licence to park anywhere when you are the cops? Yeah, I think that's a power move. Yeah. That's a, that's a massive B, uh, BDC. You, just, you can park anywhere. There's heaps of parks, but I'm going to park in the restricted park area uh, just because I can. We, I've, I mean, I've worked in radio for... God knows, way too long. And the Prime Minister always comes with various security detail. And yeah. the, the, it kind of varies in the intensity of uh, security. And Helen Clark, uh, I think midway through her, her stint, I don't know what had happened, but I think there was a little bit more concern about her safety. And they sent the, the bomb squad and dogs through the, uh, <laughs> through the building. Yeah. Um, and we spread a rumour with a certain member of the production team who was uh, a renowned stoner, like would be stoned at work constantly. <laughs> uh, and we said the drugs dogs were coming through the building and he didn't believe us and went out and saw all the Alsatians <laughs> down in the garage sniffing around all the cars. <laughs> He, he he then took off upstairs. He basically emptied all his drawers, uh, went to the toilets and was furiously flushing uh, everything he had down the toilets at work. It was one of the funniest things ever. And then we didn't have the heart to tell him that they, they weren't actually drug dogs. They were just bomb dogs. And he just basically, he basically flushed away about a month's worth of his week. Uh, it was, he should have seen it. He was in such a state. He was It was... It was, it was something to behold. Um, how, how filthy was he when you told him? Oh, so filthy. <laughs> but I, we did say, look, we didn't know, mate. We thought it was drug dogs as well. It's only later on we found out it was, you know, it was for kind of explosives because the Prime Minister. But surely, so kinda, you don't know. It, it, like, surely the dogs have been trained for everything, you know? I don't know. Are they just, are bomb dogs just bomb dogs or can they smell weed yeah. too? No, I think that, I think they specialise. That you can't have them. Otherwise, they'd be going off sniffing everything. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so I think they specialise in explosives. And then you got the fruit ones at the airport. That they're the. I mean, there must be some sort of tier system on the dog on the dog ladder. Yeah. You know, the fruit dogs must be at the bottom. Like the the do- dogs at the airport sniffing out apples and bananas and stuff that are in your in your bags. Surely, surely you got bomb at the top. Yeah. The police dog at the top, maybe. Yes. Like you can actually you can actually attack shit and you can attack people. Yeah. Then maybe bomb dogs. Yeah. But tougher. All the way uh, down to your down. cattle dogs, sheep yeah. dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your drug dogs. I mean, your drug dogs. There's rumours that they they're actually addicted to cocaine. That's why they sniff it out. Um, it's the easiest. Keep denying it. It's the easiest training in the world. You just get a dog hooked on cocaine, <laughs> and then it's got no choice but to sniff it out. The problem is getting it to heal once it's found it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It turns into cocaine beer situation. Um, <laughs> uh, and they, yeah, they, they, I mean, they do say that the be- the dogs aren't, they don't get them addicted. They just reward them heavily when they find a, um, a yeah. package, a certain package, anyway. Look up with a couple of lines. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine walking into a room and seeing a, a, a bunch of beagles racking up? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get out, shut the door, shut the door. Um, <laughs> just a little nodding to each other, just a few eyes. They, you know, they exchange a few looks. Someone, someone swaps wallets, and there's a couple of beagles off to the cubicles. Five, five beagles come out of the um, disabled toilets <laughs> at the pub and start pitching you podcast ideas. <laughs> start telling you about a business uh, that they should start. You know what? We've had a great conversation here tonight, guys. We should start a podcast. It wouldn't be too hard. To, everyone's doing it at the moment, but no one's doing it the way we're doing it. We'd have like real, honest, raw conversations. 
Yeah, I think about positive positive masculinity, man. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. We could bring dogs into um, sports. Why don't we use dogs more for like, say, someone loses their ball on the PGA Tour? Why don't we have like ball sniffing dogs? That yeah, well, they got yeah, they got the truffle pigs, don't they? That find the truffles. Yeah. Um, so that, that's an equivalent for the for the golf balls. So you know, send a little terrier off into the bush to <laughs> yeah. find the ball. Yeah. yeah. Hundred percent, and also train them to be the ball boys for the tennis. You know, why yeah. have we got kids out there? Yeah, I, it's true. Actually, I mean, it's exploitation, really, isn't it, with the ball boys? The hard part would now, be it would chase the ball back and forth across the court. Yeah, and and it would probably do a dump as well on the baseline. Um, would be an issue. Yeah, that would um, be an issue. Have you even have you even seen with the ball boys? I mean, you can't call them ball boys anymore. The ball people, P- persons. Um, they even now um, it's open to all ages now. Oh. Uh, so in some tournaments, you've got you all know, people up from all men, all <laughs> humans, and there's like some. I think some seventy year old woman got the got the gig in America. <laughs> it just kind of looked. It looked a bit weird. It looked weird. But you know, you know equal opportunity these days, Manaya. You know, we can't be ageist or sexist or anything. We can't discriminate. So if you want to scamper across a tennis court and pick up a ball and roll it back to a professional player, you can do that. Yeah, I guess the pro- as long as you're able, because. Nobody wants to see Gertrude put, prop, pop her hip out at Cindy Court, Wimbledon. You know, how does she go I, on clay? I kind of do. <laughs> it'll, just, it'll just really make it drag out. Uh, just quickly, were you the Hamilton man who stole an ambulance and crashed into a motel after being told the abscess on your buttocks was not bad enough to be hospitalised? <laughs> well, look. It obviously wasn't that bad to be hospitalised because he got in the ambulance and drove it. And if you've got an abscess on your ass yeah. that requires hospitalisation and you can drive a vehicle, i.e. an ambulance, then it doesn't require hospitalisation. Yeah. So I don't. he's kind of shot himself in the ass, really, <laughs> uh, with this because he's argued that he should go to hospital because of this abscess on his ring. Yet... He could have just driven himself because he got in the front seat of the ambulance and nicked it. Yeah. So what did you need the uh, what did you need the ambulance for? I think what he needed the ambulance for was he was on home detention at the time and he was like, I can't drive myself, but if an ambulance comes and gets me, then I'll be fine. And I think where he sort of jumped the shark was taking a manhole cover off and throwing it through the passenger seat window, then stealing the <laughs> uh, the ambulance and driving it straight back into the motel he was staying at. I think that the courts probably won't look too favourably uh, on that one. But and look, yeah, yeah um, t- to be honest with you, um, ambulance staff are usually pretty good at you know, like saying, "Hey, well, we'll take you to hospital, get you checked out." They don't usually say, "Go home or go back to bed." That's not worth it. So it must have just been like a big pimple. Yeah. And, on on his ass or something because they don't often go oh mate you're right fine go back back to bed I knew a guy who had an ingrown hair right nestled right up next to his freckle and got so ingrown that it had to had to be lanced like a boil and then stitched up but obviously it's not a sight that um, heals well (laughs) so this was an ongoing (laughs) thing for this guy for months he had to deal with this it's like it just will not heal because by virtue of the fact that where it is. I also yeah, it's just there's just so much stuff going on there and going in and out and so much moisture and yeah. Oh yeah, and there's so much bacteria as well. Yeah, you got to deal with back there. So yeah, that's that's a place you don't want to fist you. No, shout out to him. He's probably still dealing with it now. Uh, just quickly, we didn't touch on it yesterday. Some actual sporting news. We should have. Uh, the Black Caps actually played a full T20 over the weekend, and they won. They beat Pakistan. I think this was uh, Sunday night. They won by yeah. s- about seven wickets. Mark Chapman went absolutely uh, ape shit and won us the game. This this. The series is really flying under the radar, isn't it? Does, do we? What do we take away from this? Do we believe anything oh. differently after these games? Well, I challenge you to try and find it. I'm trying to place to watch it yeah. for a start. Um, well, we're into game four, I think. Our game four is tonight, I think. First one was rained off. Pakistan humped us in the first one, and we came back well in the in the third one. Mark Chapman hit. I think he had 80 off 40 balls um, to win us that game. Everyone contributed in that game, um, which was good to see. Uh, but yeah, I look, I think it's all a bit of a warm up into the World Cup, really. And I think it's a ch- basically it's a big trial for players who are on the fringe mm. um, of the team to maybe get a 
get a get a spot as a bolter in the team, potentially a chance for like Mike, Mark Chapman to cement his place. He's always, I mean, even though his record is pretty handy, and was still people still people still kind of amanar about him a little bit. Wasn't he T Twenty Batsman of the Year? ICC, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was, he was, but he's kind of flown under the radar a little bit because I think most of those scores have been overseas, so haven't probably haven't had as much attention as they as they deserve. Did, uh, but yeah, I don't think many people are looking at this series uh, with. I mean, maybe the selectors are, and that's about it. I, I think you you read out an entire team uh, that aren't there, <laughs> which are which was uh, pretty damning um, in terms of sending our key players over, but. Obviously, it's right in the middle of the IPL, um, yeah. and the New Zealand players have all been given a free pass to the IPL as well. So, you know, you'd take that over going to uh, Pakistan any day. 100%. I think that Mark Chapman is falling victim to something that we see a lot in sports, and it's the athlete who just kind of looks like he's a very baby faced dude. And I feel like if he had some sort of flair about his physical appearance, it would go a long way to getting him more starts for the Black Caps. Like if he was running a massive mullet, for example, or if he was running like a like a long beard or just some sort of cornrows, I don't know what it is, some sort of thing that makes him stand out from a physical point of view to where people are like, geez, check this dude out. Then all of a sudden he starts playing the way he is playing already. Then I think people uh, give him a bit more credit. I think Rocco Berry for the Warriors suffers from this. He just needs yeah. some sort of like you know, something to make him stand out because yeah, well, everything else is there on the field. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you. I love that you mentioned that because it's like Ben from accounts was very similar. Yeah. But Ben from accounts, he had something, he, he had something else in the fact that he was obviously very, very good, but he had that, he didn't have much, uh, there wasn't, you know, like you're saying, the cornrows or the dreads uh, or the headgear or, yeah. you know, the boots or, or the, you know, something else going on. So maybe, I mean, what's what he suggests, I quite like the idea of the cornrows, but in cricket, you don't really see them without a hat on that much. No, that's why I'm thinking I, the mullet, because he's not a, a physically imposing dude. Like Finn Allen, you can spot Finn Allen in full pads and a helmet because he's a big bastard. And he's tatted up, so perhaps it's a tats thing. Does he go for yeah. some sort of uh, sleeve or some sort of uh, situation where he's instantly recognisable? He's only a wee fella. Uh, is yeah, it I, sort of? Yeah, I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's going to have to be facial hair. He no. strikes me as a, as a Jeremy Wells of a man in terms of he's just got no hair, facial hair whatsoever. And if he did try and grow some, he'd just look like he'd been pulled through a bush backwards. Like it would just, yeah, it would just be patchy and it would make it would actually make him look worse. So I think you're right. It's it's something, it's something like it's a tat or it's a, something to do with the hair. Yeah, or. Is it some sort of signature celebration or something so that every time he hits a boundary he does something and we look forward to it? I don't know. I just think that there are so many of these players who, if they had something physically different about them, the, the stat profile is all there, but for whatever reason they can't break through, they just need some sort of gimmick. And I, I, I call yeah. it selling out, but, you know, if it gets you more playing time, then so well, bad. De Gronholm. De Gronholm's a great example. That magnificent mullet that he yeah. had for, for years. That's a prime example. It just basically gave him, it gave him a whole new personality. <laughs> it did, and no one cared who Daryl Mitchell was till he shaved his head, you know. And this yeah. is, <laughs> this is the thing. Sometimes, sometimes the thing that you need to really put you over your competition is actually nothing to do with the on-field. Um, and I do think, yeah. I, I think there's something to it. Like the Karachi wheelbarrow, for example, in the Pakistani <laughs> team. I don't think that on stats alone he would have been in that team. But the fact is, when he walks into the nets, you take notice of him. And then from there on, because you're already watching, you see everything that he does. So I think, you know, if if Mark Chapman was built like the Karachi Wheelbarrow, he would have been starting every game. <laughs> Do you, did you see that video of the Karachi Wheelbarrow going on a fitness day with the um, with the Pakistan team? Yeah, 100% I did. Uh, so yeah, the, the they're, vi- they're, they're all... <laughs> yeah, the video is like up on the side of a hill and it's filming, like panning around, beautiful view. Obviously some sort of training day and the whole team's there. And then you kind of notice that they're all cheering something and then it pans around to the Karachi Wheelbarrow, another 30, 40 metres behind them still walking up the hill. Everyone's cheering, hey! 
<laughs> and he got a guard of honor at the top. <laughs> he looks so rinsed as well. Yeah, I love that guy. He's my new. He's my new favorite non-New Zealand cricket player. Yeah, that's right. And this is what I'm saying. It's just because he looks different, so he's always yeah. going to stand out. But yeah, I don't know, Mark Chapman, try something. Um, all right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, talk a bit more sport. Sean Johnson's been in the me- media. Every time he gets interviewed, somebody tries and gets him with the old, are you going to play again next year? Because obviously he's not um, on contract for next year. And just before last year, obviously he had a standout year last year, but the year before that, people were calling for him to retire. Now all of a sudden everyone's asking him, look, are you keen to go around again after this year? He has said every time he's been interviewed, yep, I'm keen. It's just going to come down to whether the team wants me or not. And now people have started asking Andrew Webster the same thing, and I've seen two or three times now, he's said the same thing as well. Webby said, yeah, I'm keen as well. So what's the story here? Just sign it. <laughs> well, what are they waiting yeah, for? I, I, I also saw, I think Cameron George said it's up to, up to Webby. It's Webby's call. I was like, so I think everyone's just a massive merry-go-round of like, hot potato of no one wanting to actually answer. But I think, I think this is all part of the negotiation, obviously. Mm. Sean Johnson's management are obviously negotiating. I think he's pretty settled. I can't see him going anywhere. He's got bought a main house on the North Shore yeah. uh, in Belmont there. He's settled in. His kids are all at school there. Uh, I can't see him moving back to Australia. I don't know. That's kind of vibe I get. He's, no. He seems like he's in a good space. He's having fun. He's got a good team around him. I think it, they're just trying to nut out the the nuts and bolts of that of that deal i guess he probably wants to finish his career with the warriors so i guess it's how long it's for and potentially i don't know maybe it's something beyond his playing days maybe it's some you know moving into management or coaching or something beyond that maybe that's the discussion i don't know i'm completely making that up no 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 i think you're onto something there because i do think that a big part of the warriors is you've got to keep those guys around stacy jones for the longest time it's like what the hell's his job obviously he's an assistant coach now but for the longest time his job was just be Stacey Jones and be here all the time. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that means a lot of time, particularly when we're trying to bring in all these Aussie players and that. It's like, have a look at that guy over there. He basically built this club and he's now rolling joints in the back of the coach's box on national TV. <laughs> you know, and if you play hard, that could be you. <laughs> so You could do whatever you want. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's exactly, Sean Johnson's exactly the kind of player that we need to give that kind of deal. It's like, what's what's his role? His role is... He's yeah. Sean Johnson. And I actually think this could be controversial, and I know it was when it was announced last year. Uh, Manu Vatuvai got out of jail, and then the Warriors gave him some sort of deal. I haven't seen anything about I don't know if he's still around the club or not. He's the exact kind of player as well. Like, yeah, I know he went to jail, yeah. but who who's more equipped to teach these young guys about the pitfalls of being a big-time you know, sporting superstar in New Zealand than Manu Vatuvai? He's been through it all, and he's also a club legend. So I, I think there is a value in that, and I hope that there is some sort of backdoor deal there. But I don't know. Obviously, there's a bit of negotiating going on. I think I wouldn't be shocked if in the next couple of months you hear a Sean Johnson says he's open to moving back over to Australia story as like a negotiating tactic. Um, yeah. but, I, but I agree with you. I don't think he's got any. He's not moving back over there. Yeah, no. Nah, it must be. It must be relentless for people like Webby, like having a team that's settled and not like. Because obviously he's got Adam Fanua Blake, he's pissing off. He had that drama at the end of last year or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just constant. Yeah. It's just a constant game of with the, does this player loyal and going to leave or not? It must be quite, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think stressful is the right word, but just mildly frustrating. You're trying to do a job and then you've got all this shit going on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> and just... it shouldn't be up to Webby. It shouldn't, he should just say, I want him. I want to keep him. And then, you know, Cameron George and the rest of the crew do all the negotiating. He's yeah. just, I mean, to, to say it's his call, it's like, yeah, he's a good player, keep him. Yeah, that's right. He's not going to be like, nah, we need, we need fewer good players. You know, the, yeah, only, totally. the only issue I could see would be some sort of salary cap scenario. But again, that's not Andrew Webster's job to, to, to figure out. That's some other nah. number cruncher who needs to figure that out. Um, yeah, I, think, totally. I think he's going to hang around. I can't see him going anywhere. It will just be for how long and what the deal is. Um, Super Rugby, by the way, Lane. I saw an, I was yes. reading an article this morning, and it was saying basically, do we need to bin the eight-team playoff because there are only twelve teams, and we ended up in this ridiculous scenario where every team, despite the fact that the Crusaders have only won one game, every team can still technically make the eight. Um, no team has ever won the comp from further back than fourth. So, what is the point of having all of these playoff? And does it sort of 
belittle the regular season to have such a high chance of making the playoffs uh, come the pointy end of the season? I know exactly why they do it. And they did it because um, the fear that Australia would never make the playoffs, mm. um, an Australian team, and that therefore the whole pointy end of the season would be absolutely useless to the Australian audience. <laughs> it's pretty much the only reason, I reckon, because otherwise it would be the top four teams would be Blues, Crusaders, Hurricanes, Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, and then for the far, last three weeks of the competition, the Aussie guys just sit on their hands. So I think this is a way of getting at least, you know, a couple of Aussie teams in the playoffs and keeps them in the conversation and keeps the, you know, keeps the audience numbers up. That's the only, that's the only reason I can think of doing yeah. it. But I mean, what, what's the alternative for top four, but maybe a top six? I think a top six. you do a top six? You, you can do a top six, but it would, re, it would involve one of those complicated scenarios where either the top two teams get a bye or they get um, <clears throat> like two bites at the cherry. Like if they lose their first game, they get to play an elimination. You know, you'd have to do something like that. Um, I don't mind that. I don't mind that because that, that, that's what they do. Isn't that the NRL model? Uh, Once it, they get to the top six, it is, but it doesn't need to be. But yes, it is because <laughs> they yeah. eight teams make the playoffs, so they could just go straight single elimination. But they wanted to give the top uh, four teams a bit more of an advantage. So um, yeah, they do have a bit of a complicated scenario. But yeah, like I said, the the you could do six seems to make a bit more sense, and there's a little bit more to fight for. I think. I also, I'm looking at the table now. It's Hurricanes, Blues, then Brumbies. And the fourth one will shock you. It's the Rebels with the yes, I know. I ne- know. That negative, does shock me. negative 17 points differential. They've won five games. They've lost three. Uh, actually, how are yeah. they? Is it a bonus? Oh, it's a bonus point situation how they're above the Chiefs who have also won five games uh, but but have a positive 88 points differential. I don't know. It's, it's all a little bit convoluted. But, yeah, I just feel like, <clears throat> and again, one-eyed can tear, but even I'm looking at that going, too many teams. It's like Super Rugby Opicky, and obviously they don't have enough teams in the comp. They only got four teams, and their playoffs consist of four teams. So the round robin yeah. is like, what was the point of all of that? But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I think shorten it. Yeah, six six makes sense to me. Eight eight seems. I mean, half the field I think is good. Yeah, you got to be in the you got to be in the top fifty percent to make the playoffs, and that's pretty pretty um, cut and dry. Yeah, and then anecdotally, you have to be in the top four to win it, which is what it's like in the in the NRL. Like, yeah, everyone wants to make the eight, but actually you want to be in the top four because no one's won from outside of that. So, yeah, uh, yeah I quite like that as well. I think maybe that's something that they could look into next. Yeah, they won't do it, though, because that's fewer playoff games. It's, um, like you say, there's fewer chances for, for Aussie teams to go in. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and also, what does that do to a team who gets eliminated, like, if, if it was top six, then that's Crusaders done. So then what does that do to their team for the rest of the season? Don't suppose it'll matter. I can't see them turning around anytime soon anyway. <laughs> uh, just quickly, the NBA playoffs are in full effect at the moment. Right now is the perfect time for... It's a golden gambling, responsibly, uh, period, at least for me, because every day you've just got so many games on in round, in round one of the playoffs. Uh, Joel Embiid got injured the other day, which is huge. That could just about be them done. LeBron lost his first game against the Nuggets, which I called on the Friday Sportsbook yeah, podcast. You did. Uh, yeah, did. Luka Doncic lost to the Clippers, which was an upset. But at the moment, it's just a golden period for uh, for gambling. I I generally go, they've got the same game claim like they do on the NRL, so I'll generally go a three-league multi. And I yep. like, try and keep the odds down because where you lose these is when you start throwing, because NBA, there's so many different stats, great stats game. You can yeah. easily put together a 10-league multi that you convince yourself is going to come off. <clears throat> I would advise you against that. Stick between the, <laughs> the 2 to $3, two or three legs. Here's my general tip for punting on the NBA. If you can't remember what your punt is and you have to keep going back and checking what it is while you're checking the box score, there's too many legs. So just <laughs> so just put on bet because I'll go on there and I'll be like Brandon Ingram four assists and I got three points to this guy a block this guy has to get eight rebounds like no 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 you've gone too far <clears throat> my tip for uh, betting on the NBA is you don't you shouldn't have to write these down to be able to keep track of them um, I, I tell you what though we had a good we had a good 
I forgot to mention it yesterday, but we had a good weekend um, on the punt. We had the two yellow, a yellow card to each team with the Blues and the Brumbies. <laughs> yes. Uh, paying five bucks. And then we also had another bet on um, any two of Hosking, Satutu, Dalton Papali'i and Akira Iwane scoring a try. And good old, good old um, uh, Hosking scored two and Papali'i scored one. Yeah. So that, that won us another, I think, 600 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. so it was a tidy, tidy wee bit. Yeah, um, you can keep track of all of those bits on uh, our Instagram page, and um, obviously follow along responsibly and 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 have a good look at what it is because there's a lot of real vibe punts going on there because we're not playing <laughs> with our own money. The TAB gives us the bonus bits to chuck on there, so bear that in yeah. mind. When you see us spank a hundred bucks on Ryan Fox winning the Masters, just remember that didn't come out of our pocket. <laughs> We're just—it's a vibe. Yeah. Hey, look, shock horror, shock horror, guys. We're gonna. Someone, someone outed us and said, "I bet you the the ACC is sponsored by the TAB." We are. Yeah. No, we are. So we, I, and we thats obvious. But we all do our own punting on the side as well. But of course we, of course we are. I, so I came across this on a Reddit sub thread last night, um, talking about Tim Dot Naki, and then one of the comments was like, "I see the ACC talking heaps about betting. Is G Lane has he like bought or sold something, or is he on the take or blah blah blah?" It's like, no, 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 no. We say yeah. every time we put these on. This was brought to you by the TAB. The TAB have given us a hundred dollar bonus bet. It's like you didn't have to. You haven't cracked the code. You're not Sherlock Holmes here. <laughs> yes, the TAB are giving us money to to punt on. And by the way, when it wins, we pay out to you. Yeah, we give you the cash. <clears throat> yeah. And it's good fun. It's and like, it's good fun when you do it responsibly. Shout out to that guy. Anyway, um, all right, let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back with yours, please. Yours, please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. Just a quick couple of yours, please, to get through. We'll go to the first one here. Call it yours, please. Yeah, g'day, fellas. Uh, Barry <laughs> McCockinoo back here again. Um, I think I was wrong about Benaya. I think I was wrong. Um, I'd just like to give Benaya a pat on the back. It's um, bloody good form by you, mate. Um, making money against the Crusaders, betting on the force. Fuck, I'm proud of that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck the Crusaders. <laughs> <laughs> Again, some more kidnappers um, leaving messages on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, it's good to hear, but um, good to see you. Good pump your tyres up there, Manoir. Well, yeah, was that like a backhanded, <laughs> like, proud of me because I've betrayed the Crusaders? Yeah. I think so. I think it was. I mean, he sounds like a Hurricanes fan to me, that guy. Yeah, big Hurricanes vibes. Yeah. Ma- maybe like yeah. wider upper sort of area. Yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. Getting out, kind of getting out that way, kind of Featherston. <laughs> Yeah, uh, look, I just think when you support a team for long enough, you you know how they're tracking. And when I saw that they were already down by six points and their opponents were still paying $3.30, I was like, oh, geez, the TAB have fallen asleep at the wheel here. Uh, that's money for jam. And sure enough, it was. Another caller here, yours, please. Yeah, g'day there, fellas. Uh, G-Lane, got to say, I'm pretty disappointed in you, mate. Uh, mm, so letting cool. Manaya Stewart, a notorious one-eyed Cantabrian, gaslight you with a shit house golf analogy <laughs> into showing remorse for the Crusaders. Where was our remorse in 2020 when the Chiefs were 0-8? I was a Chiefs fan in Canterbury going through that. Do you think they showed me any remorse? No. Fuck them. Keep the foot on the throat, boys. <laughs> I, that is that's that warms my heart actually, Ugh. and you know what? And I apologise. I can't believe I even gave you any sort of sympathy. Yeah, I ba- um, bamboozled you, you, you on with a the, weekday. Yeah, I bamboozled you with the golf analogy. Yeah, you got me on a weekday. You got me at a weak moment. Uh, you know, I had a big weekend, and I felt sorry for you. But you know what? Fuck you. Fuck the Crusaders. I would also like to uh, give that guy a shout out for the quality of the audio. There were birds yes. chirping in the background. That's... Yes, that was good, and it, it was you know he didn't he didn't talk like he was about to kidnap my children, oh, which was good. This is the clearest example I can show the listener at home for how I like. I feel like I would say eighty percent of these were film were recorded with the lights off versus lights on. This is what lights <laughs> off sounds like. Yeah, g'day fellas, very uh, cockatoo back here again. So that's lights off. This is what lights yep. on sounds like. Yeah, g'day there, fellas. Uh, G-Lane, 
birds chirping in the background. It feels yep. light. Casual. It's conversational. It's I not threatening. No, there's no threat. I don't feel like someone dear to me is going to lose their life <laughs> imminently. You know, It's brilliant. So keep those coming through. Uh, we really appreciate those. Oh, just one last thing. I think we've got about five minutes left here on the uh, Zoom call before because we haven't paid the bill to do the longer Zoom calls. Um, one last story I wanted to run past here from the baseball world. The Yankees manager, his name's Aaron Boone, he was ejected five pitches into a game yesterday against the Oakland Athletics. Uh, so his batter, you know how they stand in the like little dugout thing? And for yep. whatever reason, the managers wear the same kit as the players, which is a whole yeah, different thing. That is weird. Well, it's like, yeah. imagine if a basketball coach was in a singlet and shorts on the sideline, <laughs> or like, you know... Scott Robertson has to stand on the sideline of the All Blacks games with a mouth guard and in boots on. I don't understand. <laughs> that would be good. Imagine Steve Hansen, fully stripped and one of the real tight little number. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't understand it. I feel like Ricky Stewart would just about do it for the crack. Uh, anyway, yeah. this guy, Aaron Boone, Yankees manager, his batter was hit by a pitch. He couldn't see it, so he yelled out to the umpire. He's like, did that just go past him or did he get hit by that? Uh, the umpire didn't turn around. And at the same time, a fan directly behind the manager yelled some shit at the umpire, just slagged them off. Umpire wheeled around, locks eyes with the manager, tossed him five balls into the game. And the manager's just like, it wasn't me! It wasn't me! I didn't do it. The whole team clears the bloody dugout. They're all out there on the field going, it wasn't him. It was the guy up in the stands. And the umpire, obviously, by this stage, he's too pissed off. He's like, I don't care who said it, you're gone anyway. How infuriated would you be if you were the Yankees manager? Oh, I'm loving the guy in the stand. Did he just <laughs> immediately sit down and stuff a hot dog in his mouth and just go, nice to see you. No, 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 <laughs> no. I didn't. No, I didn't. I don't know what you mean. No, it's him. <laughs> um, baseball's great for these kind of things, like the bench-clearing brawl and just all this little weird stuff that it has going on. Um, but I still, as I've always said, you've only either got room for cricket or baseball. I don't think anyone yes. can genuinely follow both. And unfortunately for most of us Kiwis, it's cricket. Um, yeah. All right, we'll knock it on the head for today. That'll, that'll do us for a Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll bring back another half-baked sports idea, and I think I'm going to go down the using animals and sports route from the top of the podcast, like drug-sniffing dogs. I don't know. If you've got your own half-baked sports idea, by the way, feel free to fire them in on the Yours Please, the voicemail function on the iHeartRadio app, or you can DM them into whatever Instagram page you want to. Uh, other than that, we will see you tomorrow for another episode of the Agenda podcast. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. For more episodes, subscribe on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. I was...